Good morning, good morning, family. Welcome to our Marketplace Daily Devotion today, uh, this beautiful Thursday, uh, uh, March the 16th. Um, and uh, today we're going to be coming to you with an awesome devotion titled Trusting God in the Midst of Trouble. Trusting God in the Midst of Trouble. You know, uh, so many times it's easy to trust God when things are going good, but a lot of times when our backs are up against a wall or we're, uh, you know, we're having issues that, you know, that we're fearing, you know, we tend to try to uh, handle them ourselves or we, you know, uh, lean to our own understanding and that's the thing that God told us not to do. He told us to lean to not to our own understanding but in, in everything to trust him. And so today we're going to be talking about one of our, our favorite Bible characters, uh, David. Uh, and so uh, my husband and, my, and, and I both love him very much. He was an awesome uh, man and and uh, and you can see you know David you know he was not without his flaws and he was not without sin but the Bible said he was a man that that pleased God's heart and that was because I believe David easily recognized when he made mistakes and he repented and and you know when when we should be humble enough that when we make mistakes you know, that we should be willing to repent right away. And I believe that this was when David saw his mistakes and when, you know, a lot of times people say hindsight is twenty twenty. When David was able to look back and see his mistakes and the harm that it caused people, you know, he, he repented with a pure heart. And that's why I believe God loved him. So our devotion is coming from 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter in the 10th verse. Again, that's 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter in the 10th verse. And it says, And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. Okay, so <laughs> David, he, it says he arose and he fled from the fear of Saul. So you see, he was on the run. He, he, he had a lot going on, amen. And so in this chapter, the 21st chapter, when we look at this chapter, we see that David is on the run from King Saul. And he enters into a priestly community, a priestly community by the name of Nob, that's N-O-B. And Ahimelech, who is actually the great, uh, he is actually the, the great grandson of uh, Eli, priest Eli. You know, he's the one that had the two sons, Hopna and Phineas, that the Lord ended up killing because they were stealing from the temple. And Eli also, uh, you know, died because he would not correct his, his children. Well, uh, here Ahimelech was, he was actually the great son of Eli, and he was serving as high priest. Now, <laughs> I, I believe uh, back in the story when when the Lord had he had, had taken he had, you know came when the Lord spoke against Eli, I believe he said that his 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 family line would not would not uh, be able be uh, able to uh, ever uh, be in the priesthood and and I believe you know this is kind of where it, God fulfills that what he had spoken, uh, but. Him, Ahimelech uh, was afraid when he met David. And so he said to him, why are you alone and no one is with you? David was on the run. And if you read this, you kind of see that uh, the priest, he kind of had an intuition that something wasn't right. <laughs> you know, that's why it's always, you know, don't, don't overlook those gut feelings and those intuitions. Uh, so he, you can tell by him asking this question, he kind of knew that something wasn't quite right. And David, like I said, was on the run. So he lied to the priest, which later on led to the death of that priest, along with 85 other priests and also the whole city of Nob. Children, women, children, infants, even their cattle was slaughtered. I often wonder what would have happened if David had been truthful to the priest instead of lying because of his fear. Think about that. 
you know, when I was reading this, I, I just, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. but sometimes, you know, you don't live to, to look back. Many times fear leads us to act in ways that end up causing more harm than good, which was the case here. Ahimelech was a priest. You know, he was a priest. Maybe if David had come to him, trusting God to protect him, just maybe the priest could have inquired of the Lord for David and God would have given him directions. That's why many people come to us as leaders anyway. They're, they're wanting us, uh, not our own opinion, they're wanting us to seek God on their behalf for a word from the Lord. You know? And I wonder, what if David had come to him honestly, you know, trusting in God to speak to the priest? <laughs> hmm. But instead, David's fear caused him to make up a lie as to why he was there. And if that wasn't bad enough, then he asked <laughs> for uh, the holy bread, uh, sometimes referred to as the show bread. You might, you know, those of you who are Bible scholars and studies, you know, that's referred to as the show bread, which was only supposed to be eaten by the priest. But David made up a, you know, a, 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 a reason why, you know, it was a good thing to let them have it because it would be a day old anyway. And, and so, you know, you, you read the story. <laughs> And then he turned around and asked for a sword. And and, um, and and the priest, you know, he replied that the only sword or the only weapon that was there, because that was a, a community of priests, they had no reason to have, have any weapons, you know. That wasn't their, 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 they wasn't warriors or men of war. And so he said, the only sword uh, th that is here is the sword of, of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you are the one that killed in the Valley of Elah. So with that, asking for a sword, clearly to me, it showed David's intention, uh, intentions, which was to take matters into his own hand. Sometimes when, when we are faced with problems and we're faced with with situations and, and and we are fearing what is going to be or what could be or, you know, sometimes we tend to do just what David did here. And we move ahead of God. We move and we're not in step with God. I, I've done this and made things worse for myself because God was saying, I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to go that direction. And, and we do things not thinking about all the lives that will be affected afterwards. Because when David did this, you know, had he known ahead of time that, that Saul was going to come back and kill up everybody in that city? <coughs> had he known that? I, I, I really don't think he would have went through with what, he, what, with, with, with what he did. I really think he would have taken another route. Fear is a cruel enemy. It makes us over-exaggerate. It makes us overthink things. It makes us act out of character. <coughs> Excuse me. It makes us do things that we would not ordinarily do. Or sometimes, you know, we would not do if, if we didn't fear. But if you step back, when you have this happen to you, when you come across these types of things in life, in situations, I encourage you to step back, acknowledge God, consult with God. You know, he tells us to be anxious for nothing. And in every temptation, he tells us there is a way of escape. If we acknowledge him, he tells us that in the word. So I want to leave you with this. When, when you fear uh, uh, things that are happening that may be out of your control, I don't care if it's sickness in your body, I don't care if it's coming against you know, a, a contractor or something on your business and you're fearing losing everything, I don't care what it is. If you step back, take a woosah moment and consult God 
And that's God. God, how would you have me to, what direction would you have me to walk in with this situation? Don't just be so anxious, uh, ready to move and to do things. You know, sometimes it takes days or even weeks for you to get an answer from God as to which direction to go. But I promise you, if you wait on the Lord, he says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And in due season, you shall reap if you wait on the Lord. You will not faint. You know, when I read this and I see how Saul, Saul was on his way out. And David was the new king that God was raising up. And I wonder how this would have turned out had David just been honest with Ahimelech. They could at least maybe prepared or been did something a little differently. But instead, because he lied because of fear, King Saul came through and he killed every everything, every everyone in that city. <laughs> His anger caused him to do that because of trying to get to David. So, acknowledge God. Don't act out of your own self-will. Acknowledge him and let him direct your path. So, Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for just being the sweet and kind, awesome God that you are always faithful. Your love is never ending. Your grace and mercy is everlasting. We thank you, Father, for being who you are. Help us to run to you instead of running away from you, taking matters into our own hands, making things worse instead of better. Help us, Father God, to lean your way Help us with our understanding. Help us, Father God, to, to know, God, that, you know, without you, we, we can do nothing. And there's no one to fear but you. And that fear is not being afraid of you, but it is reversing you as being the great God that you are. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us. We, we need your help. We need your guidance. We need your wisdom. And your word said that, Father God, if any lack wisdom to ask you, and you would give it to us freely. So now, Father God, we come to you repenting for our own self-will, repenting for wanting to do things our way, repenting for stepping out too fast and not waiting on you. Help us, Father God. To hear your voice. Give us, help, help us to have an ear. Clean out our ears so we can hear you. Open up our eyes so we can have clear vision. In the name of Jesus. Give you all the honor and all the praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. So for all of you that are listening today, happy Thursday. And... Um, I know you, my, my, my family over in Kenya, I know it is uh, probably nighttime or night, you know, nighttime there, but whenever you read this, I want you to know that God loves you as well and he's with you and he's ordering your steps today. Amen. In Jesus' name, smooches. Mm -hmm.